self-love, self-acceptance. Once that's secure, yeah. Well, well, why would we be looking for it outside? Because it's never enough outside. It's, it's like never, enough. never. <laughs> no, we get a hit of feeling loved and acceptance, and it's like, okay, let's see how long that'll last. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. And once we recognize, shoot, it's not enough. I constantly am looking for approval. Constantly, it's like great. If we've spotted that, it's like, yes, all right. So let's not look there anymore because it's not enough for you, is it? Mm-hmm. You know, because that kind of love is contrived. You know, yeah. it's, 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 we're doing a loop in order to give ourselves permission to rest and digest. Yeah. Let's rest and digest anyway. Hmm. Of course, we are love itself. Of course, we are sacredness itself. Welcome to the Woman Warriors podcast. You worry, I worry, we all do. If you're paying attention to the world today, there's a lot for women to feel worried and anxious about. As we explore the worries with curiosity and compassion, we learn to live more authentically and unleash the warrior within, someone who is strong, capable, and resilient, come what may. It's time to stop battling against yourself and start using your powers to meet everyday challenges with energy, purpose, and bravery. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Cush. Welcome back to the Woman Warriors podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cush, coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland. Things here are still a lot out of control. I am hopeful that as we move forward, things will calm down in the country and we can rebuild and find new ways of connecting with each other. If you would like to know more about me and my practice, you can go to progressioncounseling.com or womanwarriors.com and find me there. You can also sign up for the newsletter, progressioncounseling.com forward slash Elizabeth's newsletter and get all the updates, podcast episodes, and my blog delivered right to your inbox. Today, we're going to be talking to Jack O'Keefe. She is a spiritual teacher who I don't remember how I found her and asked, you know, and reached out to have her be a guest on the podcast. And I came into this conversation with an expectation of where we would go with the conversation. And even my questions kind of guided it in a certain way. And we ended up talking about authenticity, living a spiritual life, how spirituality and religion can be very different things. And she is lovely and an amazing woman, and I'm very excited to share my conversation. So let's get started. Jack O'Keefe is a spiritual teacher with a unique style. Her teachings cultivate wisdom, honesty, and integrity. She exposes taboos that are usually avoided in spiritual circles and encourages conversations around issues that are fundamental to our human experience. Jack's work is driven by her capacity to envision the possible future of spirituality. She speaks about the required evolution of both teachers and methods to impart teachings to make spirituality relevant and applicable to regular life. Jack offers guidance and skills so that every student is empowered in their own inner exploration. She helps them cultivate an inner autonomy and encourages them to take responsibility in both their spiritual and human evolution. Jack's books include Born to be Free and How to Be a Spiritual Rebel. She is also a founding member of the Association for Spiritual Integrity, an organization that encourages spiritual teachers and the community to support one another in a process of growth and spiritual development. Hi, Jack, and welcome to the Woman Warriors podcast. Thank you, Elizabeth. Looking forward to chatting with you. I'm so looking forward to chatting with you too. And if you wouldn't mind telling the listeners who may not be familiar with you just a little bit about you and really what started you on your spiritual journey. All right. So a snapshot of today, I'm in my fifties and I live in the U S and as one might be able to detect from my Irish accent, Mm. I spent most of my life in Ireland until I was in my mid thirties. 
Mm. What started me? Well, I was reared in a large Irish Catholic family. But Catholicism in, an, in Ireland is a little bit looser than what I've seen in the US. Hmm. However, there was, you know, six girls and I was the youngest daughter and we were reared on a dairy farm. So there was a strong work ethic. A connection to nature mm. was inevitable for all of us from the get go. Yeah. Your best friend when you're fighting with your sisters is the dog or the cat or the goat or a cow. Hmm. And it was that more than the trees and the plants. It was the living things that I felt understood me. Hmm. <laughs> and really looking back now with the eyes of an adult, I think all living beings have some unspoken depth, exquisiteness, hmm. oneness, yeah. something that can be trusted and of course, what happens is our mind gets in the way and then we see something else <laughs> and then life takes over and stuff happens and we're caught in, you know, drama and pain and suffering and stories yeah. and to-do lists and stress yes. and demands. And so something about that inner, what is it that's the same in all of us? What's in the dog? What's really in my mother, even though, you know, she's cranky a lot of the time and <laughs> overworked? <laughs> stressed of course you know mm -hmm. and that inner thing had my attention from early on knowing that there's something inside that is a lot wiser and so growing up I thought I just have to wait until I'm an adult I have to wait because I'm not going to be taken seriously I don't have rights as a kid and in those days we didn't you know yeah yeah and I have to kind of hang on somehow so I thought well where where can I touch in on this inner place a little bit more and I thought it was through religion because that seemed to be the only place that had that had space for something else so I went and studied theology in Ireland mm -hmm. and I came out an atheist well halfway through I was an atheist I'm like okay it's not religion and what I didn't know at the time is the difference between spirituality and religion yes 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 so so for the next dozen years I pushed against religion and throughout spirituality with it mm. until spirit caught me by the scruff of the neck and then that was the the you know the conscious journey of walking towards spirit okay so for you describe the difference because for me i don't consider myself a religious person but i do consider myself a spiritual person I yeah. was raised sort of Christian, but almost <laughs> sort of half-heartedly. Yeah. But yeah, so that, tell us the difference between yeah. religion and spirituality in your, yeah. your eyes. Yeah. And you know, that looseness that you speak of, that half-heartedness, mm -hmm. that's a gift. That's a gift because you're not hoodwinked into this is the only way. And we're not so drilled down in, into fear of letting it go. Mm. when at another stage of our life we have to question the values that that we were reared by mm -hmm. so so that's a blessing when we're it's a half-hearted effort of a religion <laughs> <laughs> just to pop that in there and so for me religion is an external set of ideas and beliefs that we are invited to trust to have faith in to accept mm -hmm. and you know, the surrender to a religion is surrendering to something external and perhaps to something internal. But it's a lot about what you believe and they are external things that you can name. Mm -hmm. Spirituality. I think spirituality is woven through every religion. However, it's hit and miss if you find it, if you find the spiritual part within a religion. Mm -hmm. Because spirituality is about inner discoveries. Mm. It's about your own knowing. Yeah. It's like, what's the deepest part that you can't put words on? Mm. Now, stay there. Because religion puts words on it. Because it's for people. I mean, they need to write a book about it. Spirituality has written a gazillion books and we're only at the start. <laughs> mm, I love that. And why do we have so many different words and why do we have so many different ways? And, you know, there's mindfulness and there's looking at awareness mm -hmm. and there's, you know, the interweave between psychotherapy and spirituality as your own work is, is exploring. Yeah. And how do I navigate with all of these differences? Yeah. And it 
makes us rely on your inner knowing. That doesn't come from fear because I have to believe this or I get it wrong. Mm -hmm. But your inner knowing that was innate when you were a child, before it got stumped out. Mm -hmm. What did you know? And if you can't put words on it, then that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's, the, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. If there's some, yeah, it's still or it's a small voice or it's silent or it's not bothered with any of the chaos in the world. Yeah. Now, as long as there's no avoidance in it, mm-hmm. we're good. Yeah. You see, we, we can't go there to like disconnect. Oh, I'm not interested in the outside world because, because the inside is all that's real for me. It's like, hmm we got to be able to do both and be able to function in the external as well as nourishing, expanding, investing in the inner. Mm. And so spirituality is about inner personal experiences, your own direct, immediate knowing of your true nature, of that which is real that was there before you were born and will go right on when your body falls off. Hmm. what's that yeah. and that's the place to hang out hmm. and i love that i think there are different these days modes of therapy too that sort of help you try to tap into that sort of inner self that inner yes. part of you that where you do feel the most grounded and aware yes. of the inner and the outer that's right that's right so for you i'm curious as to what your journey was like from, you know, sort of a much more structurally based, you know, learning about theology and religion to Mm. this sort of inner knowing. Mm. One thing that was an essential happening during my atheist years was when I was um, uh, sometime in university, I experienced a sexual assault. We we all Mm. used to hitchhike home from university in those days. And lo and behold, I had the stereotypical horror of horrors hitchhiking experience yeah so a sexual assault happened Mm. and I fell apart as one usually does after a rape yeah and somebody brought me to the therapist in college Mm. and you know working through that process of course then I moved from the crisis of that into oh my God, this therapy is wonderful. Oh my (laughs) gosh. Like I can bring my sister that I want to kill here. I can't want to bring my dad that I'm absolutely petrified of here. I can bring it all here. And what I was doing over those years was cultivating a toolkit to be able to see my thoughts, to Mm. be able to see my experiences from a distance. And I learned how to observe my mind. Hmm. That tool was critical. And if that was the only purpose of experiencing a rape at this point of my life, it's worth it. Hmm. At this point of my life, it was worth it. It, That that hell and horror where I thought my life was ruined forever. Yeah. You know, I I was so much out of it 10 years later that it was like, God, look at the exquisiteness of what needed to whack me over the head to get me into therapy, to understand how my mind worked and how my emotions worked. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, when I was 30, all of a sudden, literally lifting my head from a dinner plate on a Sunday afternoon, I saw dead people. And this is an atheist seeing dead people. So, of course, I'm like, this is Wow. Somebody, I've t- somebody's given me drugs, something. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Who slipped it? Like, yeah. Absolutely. It felt like an acid trip. It's like, okay, okay, what's going on? This is not funny. This is not funny to the friends that I was with, you know? Yeah. And what happened was my third eye opened ab- mm. abruptly. And so it's like a thin veil between this practical here and now farmer's daughter's world mm. right through into, hey, maybe there's something that's alive, that has nothing to do with the body at all. Maybe there are other dimensions and other spaces and other subtleties that I just pushed away. Mm. And so that started to come in and I felt I had a choice. Do I shut it down and go back to my 3D physical world? Mm -hmm. Or do I say yes to this thing that is uncontrollable, hugely wide, no guarantees of where it's going to go, a sense of being totally lost in this huge ocean of potential discovery and I went heck I'm up for it I'm up for it I'm up for it let's do it and I knew my life would change I knew the trajectory it would take everything from me or give everything to me I was hoping yeah but 
all I could see was it's going to take everything. Mm. And it did. And oh my, what a wonderful, ah, oh, what a wonderful way to go. <laughs> wow. Wow. Another, it was worth it all. You know, it was yeah. worth it all. Well, and I think it's so interesting because I mean, from like psycho, you know, traditional psychotherapy perspective, like seeing dead people or seeing spirits mm. is considered delusional or, you know, it is, it's diagnosable where right. I feel I'm hopeful. And I believe that we are opening as a, as a profession that this can be part of a human experience and, and maybe needs to be for certain people to just truly feel connected to their spirituality yes. and the other. Yes. Wonderful yes. point, Elizabeth. You know, back in those days, one man came, I, I started to work as a healer because I could see all these things, you know, mm -hmm. um, see chakras, see past lives. Mm -hmm. And one man came to me and I didn't know he was a psychiatrist. He was coming because he heard about me. Mm -hmm. And I started to talk to him about what was going on. He went home and he got really ill and he phoned two days later and he said, okay, whatever you did to me, you did something. Hmm. So during the conversation, I went, yeah, but you need to look at this, this, this. That's what's going on. There's a lot of fear in your life. And I spoke very frankly in the way Irish people can. <laughs> and he said, look, I'm a psychiatrist. I came to suss you out. I have so many people that, are, that I thought, have thought were delusional, but I'm suspicious that they're not delusional at all, that they actually have seen something that I haven't. Something in me doesn't want to prescribe, but I don't know who has a psychiatric illness and who is spiritually waking up. Hmm. Can I work with you? I said, and he said, please do. So we worked together for four or five years. Wow. Sharing clients. And I think that wave has yet to come yeah. where, psych where the medical field of psychiatry says, no, I actually think they really are seeing something, mm -hmm. but they're trained to as you say, to diagnose it as di delusional, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so our psychosis or, you know, and it's like, no, if the person can participate in life, then I'm going to look at it as a potential spiritual opening. And through giving people tools and teaching them how to manage what dimension they work in, mm -hmm. goodness me, the amount of people that must be in psychiatric hospitals misdiagnosed because they're spiritually awakening Oh my goodness. It's that's heartbreaking. Some, that's heartbreaking. That has to be happening out there. It has to be. Yeah. But we're not we're not evolved enough yet, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. The psychotherapy world can can navigate it much better than the medical allopathic model. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um yeah. And maybe that maybe more clarity will come in future generations around what's the where do they straddle there and how can we work in harmony mm. to really put words on a spiritual emergence yes rather than a medical emergency well and i i feel as if at least and not all the clients i see have a spiritual practice or mm -hmm. a particular mm -hmm. religion that they ascribe to but mm -hmm. ones that do have a very strong spiritual connection i feel tend to be more resilient because they have this faith to come yes. back to but I'd yes. be interested in your perspective on that too. Yes. And, you know, I remember reading a study years ago, which I'm sure has is updated with more data now, that even those who have surgery and have a spiritual connection or a religious belief, they heal faster mm. from regular surgeries. And so it straddles not only in the robustness of their mental health, emotional well-being, your physical body stands a better chance also hmm. from some inner depth. Hmm. And it can be a fearful thing. It's like, well, I don't know what's in there. It's like, yeah, but go there anyway. Hmm. You know, there's nothing inside. It's empty. I'm full of doubts. I'm full of fears. Okay, that's a lid on top. That's hmm. a lid on top that you're invited to see through it and know that there's more to me than that fear. There's more to me than that experience. There's more to me than my em emotional pain. There's more. Mm -hmm. And having that trust in ourselves is the first tool that allows us to say yes to that which can't be named. Mm -hmm. Yes to that inner depth. And I think, you know, you you've nailed it there in, in saying there's a, a, a robustness. There's a, a, 
there's some other resilience that is present in those people. And the invitation is for all people. It's like, hey, no matter where you are on your path, on your life cycle, acknowledge it and hang out there more because all it needs is your attention. That's what makes it robust is where is your attention? Whatever we focus on expands. And sure, you can find books that say, well, focus on money and focus on abundance and focus on the right lover. And I'm like, I'm not interested. Focus on what is deeper than what your mind can create. Hmm. Focus on that. The external world won't do it. And those of us who've been alive long enough realize, hey, the shiny, it wears off. The glitter, it wears off pretty quickly. And then I'm just left with me again. Yep. (laughs) You know, all yeah. right. So, so that me, that me, all right. What's the essence? Mm-hmm. What's the being part of that doing machine? If your body mind mechanism is a doing machine, yeah. What about what about the beingness? Yeah. What about that? And that can be such a hard place, I would say, because I do in my therapy practice specialize mm-hmm. with women and men who struggle with anxiety, the being with self can be one of the hardest things because of all the, yes, the fear really. That's right. That's right. And I think one beautiful move, you know, if, if it, if it helps to that, I explain it in this way to some of our listeners, one beautiful move we can make inside is to move from I'm in danger and what I have to do to survive or what I have to do to be loved what I have to do to, to make it. It's mm-hmm. like, how about if we just make an assumption? I'm okay just as I am. Mm-hmm. Could we make that leap into resting, hmm. into trusting ourselves rather than being in survivor mode? Because our, our lives have taught us how to be in survivor mode. And the survivor mode is full of fear because it's like what I'm afraid of, I move away from. Right. And that's what helps us to survive. Yeah. And really, on a day-to-day thing, in a moment-to-moment, can we trust that we'll survive? Yeah, yeah. Like, really, right now, is there somebody coming after you with a weapon? Really, in this present moment, your mind can say yes, but it could happen. It's like, no, no, no. What's here now? Yeah, what's actually happening? (laughs) What's really here? You got it. Yeah. What's actually here right now? Yeah. And to like, can I rest? Can I digest Mm. can i fall and flop into an internal cushion Hmm. a cushioning there is a cushioning zone that's in there and when we start the spiritual path we need other people to talk us in there we need a guided meditation we need somebody nearby us who's very sober and trusting to help us dial down Mm. and that's worth doing until we learn how to do it for ourselves yeah yeah and when we can do it for ourselves, hey, hey, right, now, we're, now we've got our foot in the door. Mm. Now it's like, okay, you're able to like, it's okay, calm down my breathing or drop into or recognize that I'm safe, drop below my emotional turmoil, b- below the signals that my chemicals are giving me because my mind and my emotions are running amok. Yeah. Can I drop deeper into that that has no name, but I know it's not a state of mind. I know it's not created by my mind. It's something, something prior to that. Mm. The more time we can spend there, the greater a resource it becomes. It's about time because our attention will expand whatever we focus on. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I just, I think it's part of your bio, but something that really resonated with me is that your work strives to help individuals tap into their own spirituality so that it is their resource versus, as you said, like religion being this sort of external resource that the resources within, which is just amazing to me. That's right. That's right. And, you know, while we can join a group to meditate or to get some insight, it is, it is a a yo-yo club. Mm -hmm. You're on your own, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Why, oh, why, oh, you know, and, <laughs> and that yo-yo club is, is a blessing because you go to sleep on your own. You might go to bed with somebody, but you go to sleep on your own. Mm-hmm. You drop into that most deep place on your own. It is yours. It is sacred. It is infinite. Mm-hmm. 
And to do that has a slight for ourselves will not be the same for any two people. And that's the beauty of it. That's why we've got a, I get support from out there, but I'm doing this for me. Mm-hmm. And once we prioritize, hey, I, I'm no longer going to compare my spiritual capacity to somebody else's because actually it's going to be unique. Just as our faces are unique, our path to our inner sanctuary is unique. However, the inner place is actually where we're all one. Hmm. There's, there's the beautiful, it can be a mystery until we actually get it really get it it's like oh gosh that's the same that was in my dog when I was six years old that same essence is where we all meet inside where separation and individuality we can see is created by our mind but we are not our mind we are not our thoughts Mm. and getting that distance is really possible when we like hey okay what's deeper than my mind right now what's deeper than thought what's deeper than thought And each of us has to find, how do I touch into my human being, not human doing? How do I get in there? How can I go from fight or flight to rest and digest? Mm. What are the tools that I've picked up? We all need those tools. Yeah. And so how with clients that you do work with, I mean, I'm assuming Mm. you're still working with individuals Mm. or groups and Mm -hmm. how, how do you help them? move beyond the fear, move beyond the fight or flight to Mm. tap into that, you know, more internal self. Yeah. Yeah. I work with a full spectrum of where people are at on the path, because what I'm interested in is each of us owning our own path Mm. and not denying or not comparing ourselves, but like, hey, this is your beautiful, beautiful, unique way. Let's be brutally honest about what's playing for you. And so with that approach, it's a level playing field, whether I'm talking with spiritual teachers who have an embodied awakening or whether I'm talking with somebody who has no capacity to find the stillness without an external pointer leading them in there. The full spectrum, it's like, it's all beautiful. It's all unfolding as it must Mm -hmm. at its own pace. However, bringing each person to autonomy is what's important. I do some one-to-one work. I give retreats that are usually somehow generally able to span the spectrum in that your inner, no matter how deep and how familiar you are with your beingness, with your inner singularity, that sacredness, no matter how much you hang out there, I'm interested in where's your edge? When the rubber hits the road, And you have a tax bill that's three times what you thought. Mm -hmm. Or somebody dies dies that's really, really close to you unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. Where is your spirituality now? And so that's my approach is like, how deep can you go? What stops you from staying there? Why do you abandon your inner beingness, that seat of all wisdom, in order to pick up your phenomenal toolkit at a cost of leaving the seat of wisdom? that is uniquely yours. So how our spiritual wisdom is able to show up in an embodied way Mm -hmm. through having our heart open, through allowing us to be not fearful, but kind, allowing us to be, oh, that's one opinion. And this is another opinion. Mm, Maybe my opinion, I really believe I'm right. Wow, that's my mind. My mind really believes I'm right. Okay, somebody else's mind would really believe that they're right. And it could be the exact opposite of what I'm thinking now. Hmm. So your seat of wisdom allows you to have a wider view of what's going on in life. Yeah. If you leave your inner seat of wisdom, you'll get sucked into my story, Mm. my story. And it takes all of your attention. And that's when we suffer. That's when we suffer. All of our attention is in the me, myself, I, because I'm trying to stay alive somehow. I'm Mm. trying to validate myself somehow. All of my attention must go in here to protect. Hmm. And that's usually from our history. Yeah. Because our inner knowing can be present to any moment, even at gunpoint, we can be present at any moment. And like Mahatma Gandhi, it's like, okay, there is the guy who's going to shoot me later today. And he bows down to him in that knowing, you know? Yeah. And what is that capacity 
We all have that. But it means saying yes to our inner beingness and allowing it to, to penetrate every cell. That's a surrender. That's a trust. Mm. That's an expansion. You know, yeah. it's like, wow, can I really be that naked? And of course, mm. you, you only know you're naked, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you only know that you're sitting there with an open heart and you're, you don't have your usual survivor shield protecting mm. you from mm. the damage. You know, yeah. and it's like, maybe there is no damage. Maybe my wounded self, maybe my memory is filtering out what's good here. Yeah. Okay, mind, I see you, mind. Thank you for helping me to navigate in the world. But you have such a limited capacity. Mm. And I want to see from the wider vista. Hmm. And no matter where we are on the spiritual path, it's always about that. You are not your thoughts. You're not your mind. You're not who you think you are. You're so much more showing up in a body. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It just yeah. feels so like such a nice place to reside. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> and Indeed. I know that it is, it is also, I mean, for, for me personally, and I've shared this in other areas of the podcast, you know, having a trauma history, as you disclosed uh -huh. you yourself too, that uh -huh. it's so easy to fall back into that fight or flight place yes. And that it really, it is a practice to continue to sort of come back to the rest, digest, the more spiritual, the inner knowing. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. To drop our protective, defensive mm -hmm. mechanisms that, that we think helps us to be loved. Yeah. Helps us to be accepted. And, you know, self-love, self-acceptance, once that's secure. Yeah. We, well, well, why would we be looking for it outside? Because it's never enough outside. It's, it's like never, enough. never. No, we get a hit of feeling loved and acceptance, and it's like, okay, let's see how long that'll last. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. And once we recognize, shoot, it's not enough. I constantly, I'm looking for approval. Constantly, it's like great. If we've spotted that, it's like yes, all right. So let's not look there anymore because it's not enough for you, is it? Mm -hmm. You know, because that kind of love is contrived you know yeah. it's 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 we're doing a loop in order to give ourselves permission to rest and digest yeah let's rest and digest anyway hmm. of course we are love itself of course we are sacredness itself hmm. that that's what our nature is it is present and then this phenomenal experience is on top for the sake of having experience i don't think there's any other purpose to it really it's about Allowing us to imagine that we're something else except divine essence it does a great job. We, mm. we can really, we can really believe that what our mind says is true. It really works. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it's a setup. Yeah, it's yeah. a setup. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's for protection or survival or to seek love. Yes. yes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And and all of it can go. And that's the invitation. It's like, all right, yes. Letting go of all of your toolkit, that's the surrender that's asked of us. Mm. And so totally worth it. Mm. It will bring up fear on the way because fear will say, hey, you, you have no protection in that beingness place. You'll just go la la. You'll be, a, you know, you, you'll be a disconnected, I don't know, uh, hippie, dysfunctional. You, you'll be <laughs> right. cut off from life, you know, right. and right. it's like, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on bring it on if that's what fear says is the worst that can happen i'll take it yeah. i'll take it you know <laughs> so so facing the yeah the yo-yo club you are on your own okay uh, yeah and to celebrate that it's like actually of course i'm on my own i've got to do this for me because i love me because i i want peace calm delicious inner rest Mm -hmm. I, I want that for me and nothing less will do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Now we're on track. Now we're on track. Now let's walk our talk and put that into practice, you know? Yes. And, and it's interesting how much our Western culture, you know, sort of fights back against that self-love. It's like tough love. You need to, you know, beat That's yourself right. up to get yourself really moving anywhere. But That's right. 
That's that right. Doesn't help. That's right. And it it's hurts. about yeah, it hurts. Yeah. Exactly, Elizabeth. It hurts. It turns us inside out. Yeah. yeah. It does. It does. And you know, using it to as a pointer is like, oh, there's the pressure again to look a certain way. There's the pressure to change my image, my body weight, to look a certain way, to perform, yeah. to, to be doing better, to be driving a better car. There it is. I see you. I see you. Mm-hmm. And I'm not buying it. Mm-hmm. I'm not buying it. Now there's courage. Yeah. There's courage. That is you so know, and true. One thing I did on my path, and I, I often advocate it, is pray for courage or call it in or will it or cultivate it whatever one of those makes sense we have to have courage to be able to say no to these external pressures that hurt yeah and to face the fears that come up when we decide to let go of those things too that's right that's right and you know i want to guarantee as much as i can it's worth it <laughs> it's yeah. worth it it's worth it it's worth it yeah Take a chance. It's worth it. Trust your own inner knowing. The part of you that knew when you were very small, adults are bonkers. <laughs> you know, this, yeah. is, this is crazy stuff that's yeah. going on here. That part of you, that knowing, that's still there, you know, before mm-hmm. the mind took over and became the, the only voice that we heard. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I could talk to you for another 30 minutes, but I know that we have to wrap up and I I want people to be able to find you and know how to, I know you've got books and as you said, you do retreats. So how do people find you and get to know you better? Great. So my, um, my website is Jack O'Keefe and in, in Ireland, Jacqueline's are usually Jack's, not Jackie's. <laughs> so, so it's J-A-C hyphen O'Keefe.com. So in my website, you'll find everything. Yeah. The best thing I suppose would be to sign up for a newsletter, which is once a month, because that tells you where I'm going, because I am, um, I focus on different things. Like at the moment, I'm looking at, at the role of women and how can we inform the future of spirituality to move it more into the workplace? How do you live a spiritual life when you've got four kids? And how, how does that show up? Because our mm. models might be the robed monk who is like really still and detached from all responsibility and isn't concerned about a mortgage payment because somebody's even going to cook his dinner. <laughs> so it's like, okay, that's quite patriarchal. What, what, what would it look like if there was more of the feminine in it? And so things like this that are topical mm-hmm. for my own personal growth um, are always inform the teachings as I move on. And so mm-hmm. that's why a newsletter m- might be useful. Mm-hmm. From free stuff, there's a YouTube channel. And I have a podcast, which is an upload of, it's not interviews, it's an upload of me helping people in, at various retreats, at live retreats all over the world for the last dozen years. And so there are, um, they're for free, obviously. The Mind Stops Here is the name of the podcast. The Mind yes. Stops Here. And so that will give a sample of stuff that might be, oh yeah, I know that. And I have no clue what she's talking about there. It's a full <laughs> spectrum of what can show up on the spiritual path if somebody would like to do that. Then also on my website on Sundays, live every week, I have a Zoom call with anybody who wants to show up. And it's called the Truth Serum Cafe. And we come with our cup of coffee and there I lead with a guided meditation. There's some type of a focus of a teaching. And then we work it through and people use the chat box to communicate. And that community is very potent. Mm. People even help each other in the chat box. It's like, hey, this book that I read would help Mariana, you know, yeah. who asked uh-huh. this question earlier. And so that community is becoming people's Sunday's spiritual resource. Hmm. And that's ongoing. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then every quarter I give a retreat, which is always like the deepest of the deepest. And how does that show up in the world? How mm-hmm. does that show up in how we use power? How does that show up in terms of the self-critic? How do, what does your inner beingness, how does it meet the inner critic that goes yakety yak in, <laughs> in our minds that yeah. says you're not good enough, you're not right. So that was the last retreat, you know? Oh. 
how do okay. we how do we unravel yeah how do we unravel the inner critic do we trust it can we let it go would we be able to manage in the world if we had no inner voice telling us what to do or what was not good enough or measuring us what would it be hmm. like not to have it at all and so retreats every quarter they're online now obviously mm-hmm. explore explore these issues Mm. you know of like yeah how does it show up in the world because that's the feminine aspect it's about getting real get messy in the world instead of hiding away how do we marry our inner and our outer yeah you know yeah 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 because the world is there and we have to be in it but can we be in it from that more spiritual place versus uh, survival yeah. An authentic place, not a dissociated, yes. not an avoided, not, yeah. not a denial place. I'm going into my spiritual place because like even somebody yesterday texted me, you know, and I just said, hey, are you doing OK because of what's happening politically in the US? Mm-hmm. And, you know, are you doing OK with what's going on? And she said, I have no idea what's going on. I'm choosing to be apolitical. I'm like, mm, OK, we'll see how long that will last. <laughs> One of her teenage kids, you know, gets down and dirty and is involved in that, then, then she won't yeah. be a political, you yes. know, it's like, yes. all right. And so denial plays. And I, I, I would never be so bold to say, hey, your view is incorrect. I'd be like, all right, sister. Yeah. Enjoy it while it lasts, you know? <laughs> yeah, because there's places for all of it. You know, every path is the one we, our own path is the one we have to honor. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah. my reply to her was like, hey, okay, good for you. For me, I'm, I'm glued to it because I want to be present to it. I want, yes. to, I want to test myself. Can I watch this without an inkling of judgment? Mm-hmm. Can I watch this, what's happening in any country at any time? But right now it's the US. Can I watch this without any fear? Can I watch this without, without any projection into, oh, look at what could happen? Can I be present? and aware Mm. in my beingness and allow this to unfold without any judgment or criticism and come with a place of love. Where is love needed now? How would love see this? Mm. What what, what would love do for for these times of coronavirus? What would love, how would love see it? How Mm. does God see it? How does my beingness see it? Whatever language resonates for each of us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That feels really important. And in this, this yeah. time where we're feeling so divided and yes. very ready to judge and point that's fingers. Right. Yeah. And all that's going to do is all that's going to do is dive us deeper into our mind. That's all about separation and safety. Right. It's like, Hey, can we put our attention on the beingness mm. and watch and watch our usual triggers and respond to them differently? What yeah. would it be like to respond differently? So that mm. my mind isn't telling me how to respond emotionally, usually. And so, okay, I'm not going to my fight or flight. What does mm. my right rest and digest think? Mm. It doesn't think, it watches, it observes, it blesses, it serves. Oh, and that's a lot. That sits very much in my heart right now because it is so easy to see the other as bad, you know, whatever the other is. And I feel like right now what we need is more of the, yes, how do I see this from love and compassion and understanding? That's that's right. Yes. Because the world is hungry for that, for those qualities that you've just named. Yeah. And so aren't we surely called to embody that, to spread that, to let our bodies and our minds be a a conduit for that to be here? Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. In an in an authentic way. An authentic way. Yeah. Well, Jack, thank you so, so much for coming on the podcast today. I had expectations of what the conversation would be, and it was so much more. So I appreciate oh, your thank you, Elizabeth. I'm so glad mm-hmm. it it um I'm so glad it it might have meaning for your community. Yes. But, um yes. My honor to be invited to such things. Thank you. I think I could have spent another hour more talking to Jack O'Keefe. I just found her to be a, just a connected soul. And my journey with spiritualism has definitely brought me 
closer to a place of where she, what she's teaching, you know, that the spiritual nature that resides within us is really our most authentic place to be, our most authentic self, when we can come from that place of groundedness and self-knowing. I just really, really felt connected to her and our conversation was just so full, full of all kinds of amazing insights and information just from learning how her ideas on through being your best self, you are your most, you know, being your most authentic self, you are your most spiritually connected self. And that, I love it. I love it. So I hope you will check out her books. I hope you will attend one of her Sunday spiritual gatherings. All of her information will be included in the show notes and you can find them at progressioncounseling.com or womanwarriors.com. Again, if you want to know more about me, you can sign up for the newsletter there as well. I hope you all have a very connected, compassionate, self-loving week. Ciao for now from this woman warrior. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Woman Warriors Podcast. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Music was written and performed by Andy Cush. If you'd like more information on this episode, you can find the show notes, the resources shared today, and links to the guest profiles at womanwarriors.com.